Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Charlie Paris Concordia Blue. This watch is available from charlieparis.com for €325. Euro. The Concordia Blue is available in two versions. The automatic version, which I have previously reviewed, and the quartz version you're looking at here. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the Concordia Blue comes in a watch box which is protected by this outer cardboard sleeve and as you can see on the front of the sleeve we have the address of the Charlie Paris Boutique. So Charlie Paris retail their watches at their Paris Boutique and also online on charlieparis.com. The watches are designed in Paris and they are manufactured in Bessonneau in France. This is the watch box and as you can see it is finished to a high standard and upholstered with a very aesthetically pleasing velour fabric. The interior is finished with a contrasting fabric material in white and the watch sits on a padded pillow cushion in the centre of the base as one would expect. So very aesthetically pleasing and good attention to detail, nice presentation and one immediately gets the impression that the Charlie Paris Concordia Blue is a high quality piece. With the watch one gets this card which is a thank you card from the Charlie Paris team and it thanks the collector for the purchase. This is the guarantee card that comes with a watch and I'm pleased to report that the Concordia Blue is covered by a 24 month international guarantee which is very reassuring. Usually at this price point, €325, Euro, one would expect a watch to come with a 12 month international guarantee so it's very good and Charlie Paris deserves full credit for offering a 24 month guarantee with the watch. And lastly, one also gets this very comprehensive owner's instruction manual. It's bilingual, so it's in French and also English, clear, concise, high definition diagrams and clear, concise instructions, which detail the operation of the automatic version and also the quartz version we're going to be looking at in this review. So the quartz powered version we're going to be looking at is powered by the Seiko VH31 and this owner's instruction manual details every aspect of its operation. So, with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Charlie Paris Concordia Blue Quartz version. We have a 38mm case diameter, a lug to lug measurement of 45.5mm, a thickness of 11.1mm and a lug width of 20mm. The Oyster style bracelet tapers from 20mm at the lugs down to the V-shaped flip block clasp and as you can see the V-shaped flip block clasp is signed to a high standard with both the Charlie Paris brand emblem and also Charlie Paris brand logo. Brass satin finished to the top side, underside and flanks and finished to a high standard. Now I'm often critical of brands only having three micro adjustment holes in their flip block clasp. Credit where credit's due, Charlie Paris have made the correct decision because they have used three, sorry, four micro adjustment holes rather than three, and that allows for plenty of fine tuning of the bracelet length to get the perfect fit. However, I would like to see a heavier gauge of metal used in the flip block class because that would further enhance it. With regards to the rest of the specification, we have a double dome sapphire crystal which has blue tinted AR coating on the underside. And I think they've made the correct choice by using blue tinted AR coating rather than clear AR coating because it has a characteristic blue hue when one tilts the piece at an oblique angle. The blue hue of the AR coating complements the navy blue matte style and it's very aesthetically pleasing and also highly effective in reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the silver baton hands which are mirror polished to a high standard. So it's a double dome sapphire crystal which is 3mm thick and as you can see when I tilt the piece at an oblique angle it does have a slight distortion and magnification effect which does look similar to a single dome flat, uh, sapphire crystal which is flat on the underside but the 3mm thickness is the reason for the distortion. I can confirm that it is a double dome sapphire crystal. Now the benefit of having a 3mm thick double dome sapphire crystal is the Concordia Blue has an impressive 300 meters water resistance. Usually at this price point one would expect a watch to have 100 meters or 200 meters water resistance. To get 300 meters of water resistance is very impressive specification. I like the symmetry of the applied indices and I think Charlie Paris deserve full credit because they haven't just copied the default Submariner Maxi dial layout or Tudor Black Bay dial layout. They have changed the 12 o'clock index on the dial from being a triangle to a circle. 
So I like the symmetry of it and the absence of a date complication means that it has perfect symmetry with the 9, 6 and 3 rectangle indices on the dial. It's not over branded with text and specification and I like the contrasting red text at 6 o'clock just saying automatic with a water resistance rating of 300 meters so just the right amount of information. The matte navy blue dial contrasts very well with a white chapter ring. And it really is a very well executed, clearly legible, functional dial. The baton hands are very easy to read. And I also like the rectangle um, loomed pip on the sweeping second hand. It is very easy to read. And it's just a very well executed dial design. I think it's beautiful. Flawless mirror polishing to the bezel, which is made from 316L grade stainless steel. And it complements the flawless mirror polishing to the flanks of the case. Very similar case shape and profile to the Tudor Black Bay 58, which is a 39mm. And this has very close proportions to the Black Bay 58 because it is 38mm diameter. I like the taper of the lugs and also like the large chamfer, which is machined on the edge of the case, which marks the transition between the tops of the lugs and the flanks. Brush satin finishing to the tops of the lugs is done to a flawless standard and it contrasts very well with the mirror polished flank. So credit where credit is due, Charlie Paris have produced a very well proportioned and also a very well finished case. Absolutely flawless polishing throughout and flawless brush satin finishing. One detail I like about the Oyster Style bracelet is the use of female pivoted end links. As you can see, they've made the correct decision by using female pivoted end links rather than male end links, which would extend the overall lug to lug measurement. So the benefit of the female pivoted end links is they allow the Oyster Style bracelet to articulate and they get a very good snug fit, pulling the head of the piece close to the wrist. And it really does give a sublime fit. Beautiful luster to the 316L grade stainless steel oyster style bracelet as you can see it's just absolutely gorgeous looking at the luster of the brass satin finishing. So we've got brass satin finishing to the top side, underside and interestingly we've got contrasting mirror polishing to the flanks. Push pins in the bracelet. Now at this price point push pins are acceptable. It's €325 Euro, but however this could be further enhanced if Charlie Paris upgraded the push pins to screw pins in the bracelet and I think that would be a, a notable improvement. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now I haven't sized the bracelet and this is the extra long length of bracelet. Now one thing I want to give due credit to Charlie Paris for is the Concordia Blue, both the automatic and also the quartz version you're looking at here, is available with four different length bracelets. So rather than having to resize the bracelet, a collector can purchase the watch online and select one of four uh, bracelet length options, short, medium, long or extra long. And this is the extra long. As you'll know from my previous reviews, I have a large 8 inch wrist. I haven't sized the bracelet, but I can confirm the extra long bracelet fits my wrist Perfectly, I can indeed fit uh, an index finger underneath a bracelet and clasp at all times. And I really like that, so I think it's a good offering from Charlie Paris to be able to choose a short, medium, long or extra long bracelet. And that negates the need to resize the bracelet. One can simply use the four micro adjustment holes in the V-shape flip lock clasp to fine tune the fit. So as you can see, it gives a sublime fit on wrist. If you're a collector with a 6 to 7 inch wrist, you're going to find this to fit you to perfection. The 38 millimeter case really is a very nicely proportioned head of the piece. They've made the correct decision by using a 20 millimeter lug width. And the lug to lug measurement is relatively short at 45.5. But the benefit of that is it pulls the case snug to the wrist. It has a nice curved profile to the undercut of the case. So it's a low profile piece. The benefit of using a quartz, the Seiko VH31, is it is lower profile than an automatic or manual wine piece. This is only 11.1 millimeters thick, and that's with a double dome sapphire crystal, as you can see. Normally pieces with an automatic movement with a double dome sapphire crystal, I would expect them to be in excess of 13 millimeters. So to get this down to only 11.1 millimeters is outstanding and Charlie Paris deserves full credit for it because this isn't a 100 meter water resistant piece, it's not 200 meters water resistant, this is 300 meters water resistant with a 3 millimeter thick double dome sapphire crystal. So the specification is very strong at 300 meters, but also it's a very practical piece for a daily wear piece because it is only 11.1 millimeters, a very low profile piece. So the reason why it's so low profile, bearing in mind it has a thick three millimeter double dome sapphire crystal is due to the low profile screw down stainless steel case back, which I'll show you. 
The benefit of using a quartz rather than manual wind or automatic piece is that the quartz movement is lower profile. So as you can see, they've slimmed down the low profile screw down case back. It's still able to provide an effective hermetic seal to 300 meters rather than 100 meters or 200 meters but it's flatter and therefore it sits lower profile to the wrist. 11.1 millimeters really is very impressive. Now, if you look closely at the engraving on the case back, you can see it says Objective Pole Sud. And I'll explain what that means and why it has a map of Antarctica on the case back. The Concordia was used by a solo explorer in the South Pole. And the solo explorer had an expedition to the South Pole wearing a Concordia. Now, the South Pole is an area of Antarctica which has very strong magnetic fields, so the watch was thoroughly tested to be anti-magnetic. And underneath this screw-down case bag, it has an anti-magnetic shield. And the anti-magnetic shield means that the watch meets the criteria for ISO 764. So, in simple terms, I'll explain what ISO 764 means. The watch has to be resistant to 60 gauss of magnetic field. And, of course, this was used in the expedition to the South Pole in Antarctica, which has very strong magnetic fields, and that tested the watch and proved that it had resistance to 60 Gauss, which is ISO 764. So it is a highly anti-magnetic piece. It's also 300 meters water resistance, and it's also been proven in very low temperatures because in the South Pole in Antarctica, the temperatures drop to as low as minus 37 degrees Celsius, which is an incredibly low temperature. And this watch still survived minus 37 degrees Celsius, and it also survived 60 gauss of magnetic field. So it's an incredibly thoroughly well-tested piece. The Concordia is a very robust watch. So looking at the end links, we also have quick releases, and I like the quick release levers at both ends of the spring bars. It means that one doesn't need a spring bar tool to remove the bracelet and fit a strap to the watch. And they deserve full credit because often brands will just use uh, the conventional spring bars. I like the use of quick release spring bars. The solid end links are a good tight fit to the case. So let's test the crown action. No finished crown and we have an anodized blue ring which complements the navy blue matte style. Now one detail I like about the profile of the knurled crown which is solid 316L grade stainless steel and signed with an emblem as you can see is it has a conical profile rather than being parallel. It tapers, as you can see, the outer portion of the crown is lower profile than the inner portion, it tapers in a conical shape. So it's actually very tactile and very grippy. One can get good purchase between one's index finger and thumb. And I like the knurled finish, very aesthetically pleasing with a flawless mirror polishing and anodized ring. But the conical profile means it's very grippy. So, the Seiko VH31 Quartz is made in Japan. It has a characteristic pop which pushes the winding stem out of the movement. And of course, being a quartz, one doesn't manually wind it and it's battery powered. So, pulling it out to the final click position is the time setting position. Absolutely silky smooth, very light resistance, notably lighter than a mechanical movement, such as a Seiko NH35A, for example, which you'll all be familiar with. I like the silky smooth feeling of the Seiko VH31 Quartz. It's an absolute pleasure. And as you can see, it has hacking. I've now hacked the movement. The second hand has stopped dead, so it's possible to set the time precisely to the second. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click, and as you can see, that restarts the movement. So let's test the crown action, screwing it back down. It's absolutely silky smooth to unscrew. Immediate thread pickup, and it's absolutely silky smooth to screw back down. This is a very well executed screw down stainless steel crown. So the crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 300 meters, which is very impressive. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to its absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see, it has not disappointed. This is clearly top grade C3 Superluminova. It is 10 out of 10 performance. It's glowing incredibly brightly and it will continue to glow for a good length of time. Charlie Paris deserves full credit because this is a mid-tier price point piece at €324. Euro. We're not looking at a piece that costs in excess of €2,000, but that is the kind of grade of loom we're getting. The kind of top grade C3 Superluminova that one would expect on a €2,000 piece. So as you can see, it is glowing very brightly. I like the symmetry of the applied indices and I also like the 
baton style hands because they have several layers of C3 superluminova. This is what five or six layers of C3 superluminova looks like when it's applied with good loom plots on the applied indices and the baton hands. Several applications. No cross cutting measures whatsoever. It really is equal in quality to the loom used on the Tudor Black Bay 58, for example, which I have previously reviewed. I think they've made the correct choice by using C3 Superluminova rather than BGW9 Superluminova, which would give it a blue tone. The green tone of the C3 really does fit the vintage aesthetic of the piece. I like the use of the rectangle loom pip on the sweeping second hand. As you can see, it's easy to see the second hand sweeping around the dial. So it's just very aesthetically pleasing and very good performance. I really like it. Right, so let's discuss the movement used because it's one of my favourite aspects of the piece and it's reason alone to purchase the Concordia Blue. So as I've discussed, the Concordia Blue is available in two versions. The automatic version, which is powered by the STP 1-11, which I previously reviewed. And this is the quartz powered version, which is powered by the Seiko VH31 quartz, which is made in Japan. So it's a relatively new movement made by Seiko. They introduced it in 2018, but now in 2021 it, ha it has become a reliable, well-proven workhorse quartz movement. It's one of my personal favourite movements, and I'll explain why that is. It's a very reliable movement, but it's also very accurate. It has an accuracy of plus or minus 15 seconds per day. So I want you to consider that for a second. That isn't plus or minus 15 seconds per day or per week. That is plus or minus 15 seconds per month of accuracy. So better accuracy than plus or minus half a second per day. It's incredibly accurate. Now, if you look closely at the second hand, you'll notice that it doesn't tick like a conventional quartz. It beats at four beats per second. So the second hand actually sweeps more like a automatic movement rather than a quartz movement, which ticks. And I really like that aspect of it having four beats per second. As you can see, it makes the quartz second hand look like it's an automatic. So it has a smoother sweep. And this is something I particularly like about the VH31. Often collectors dislike quartz movements because it makes the second hand tick rather than sweeping smoothly like a quartz such as the Seiko NH35A, which, be, which runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 3 hertz. The second hand has a nice smooth 3 hertz sweep. But with the 4 beats per second of the VH31, the second hand does have a similar sweep to an automatic and it makes it more aesthetically pleasing. But it still retains the accuracy of plus or minus 15 seconds per month. Now, in terms of battery life, it has a two year battery life and I think that is perfectly acceptable, bearing in mind the accuracy of plus or minus 15 seconds per month. So I really like it. There are no negatives to the Seiko VH31 whatsoever. It's very reliable, very accurate at plus or minus 15 seconds per month. And the build quality, the quality control, the reliability are all outstanding. And I think Charlie Paris have made the correct choice by using the VH31. It is a credible, high quality Seiko quartz movement made in Japan. Right, so lastly, I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch should meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So this quartz-powered version of the Concordia Blue is €325. Euro. Yes, I consider it to be excellent quality, and yes, I consider it to be excellent value at €325. Euro. The watch is absolutely loaded with the specification. Double dome sapphire crystal with blue tinted AR coating, 300 meters of water resistance. It also has an anti-magnetic shield, as I've discussed, which meets the criteria of ISO 764. So it's resistant to 60 gauss, 300 meters of water resistance because of the screw down case back and the screw down crown. Really, the only negatives to the piece are the screw, the push pins, which I would like to see upgraded to screw pins. And also I would like to see the gauge of metal used in the flip block clasp upgraded to a heavier gauge but this is subjective for the majority of collectors this isn't going to be a negative consideration these are shortcomings which one can accept at the price point the use of female pivoted end links is correct and i really like it it gives a very good fit and also the proportions to the piece are outstanding now with regards to a watch when i'm when i'm evaluating it there are two key points that I look for. It should have excellent quality loom. And as you can see, this has top grade C3 Superluminova. So it's met that criteria. 
And the other criteria is it should have a silky smooth screw down crown, which this does. It has an excellent, well executed screw down crown, which provides an effective hermetic seal to 300 meters. So the specification is strong and the quality control, the build's quality and the finishing throughout is also outstanding. So I'm going to declare it a champagne watch for lemonade money. I'm going to highly recommend the watch and I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Charlie Paris Concordia Blue. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.